What's up? It's your boy Carcino. Let's talk about the most underrated films of 2015. Because there are a lot of movies that came out that were completely underrated that I thought. And I think we need to talk about them. Number 10, The Man from Reno. Anybody ever heard of that? The Man from Reno? Well, The Man from Reno is one of those films that come out like once a year. There was kind of like, it's more of an indie type film. And a lot of people didn't really get caught up in it. But me, I like this. And it's a, it's a movie with a twist at the end of it. There's a San Francisco town sheriff, you know, Japanese author. And, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a twist at the end, but I guarantee you this movie is completely the movie you decide to run out and rent. If you can find it on video, Netflix, or anything, you will get your money's worth. I guarantee anything that you want to see is in this movie. The Man from Reno, because I don't want to tell you the plot. But let's just say a stranger in San Francisco and a Japanese crime novelist. <laughs> you know, and it ends up that she's going to get caught up in some real life homicide type thing. You know, and I'm trying to tell you, it was a very good movie. Highly underrated. Man from Reno. Check it out. I guarantee you will love it. Voices is number nine on the list. Y'all remember Voices? I do. I seen it all the time at the video store with Ryan Reynolds. Voices is is a a guy, the quirky guy at work, wants to get the hot chick and date her and talk to her. And it's Anna Kendrick. Okay, Anna Kendricks is the girl that rejects him, of course, because he's the quirky guy. And he hears voices from his pets. And his cats want him his cat wants him to be a killer and go out and be the serial killer, whatever, Mr. Whiskers. And his dog <laughs> wants him to live a life of normalcy. So he's conflicted with the voices, and it, it's a wacky movie, but it's very underrated, very, very nice. And I think that the world will enjoy that film, because it's full of great performances by Ryan Reynolds and Anna Kendricks. And the pet, the, the pet's still the show for me. And I think... Uh, it's going to be a bigger hit now that the uh, reviews and stuff are coming out about it. I think it's one of them people go back and it become one of the cult classics. And then you got Far From the Manning Crowd <clears throat> as another one on the uh, underrated list. I, did, I mean, they talked about it and raved about it. I think that it was better than what people spoke about it. And I didn't see it till late. And it's be it's because it seems like a boring movie when you look at it because when you look at the previews of people it's like oh well you know we've seen it before and she's a headstrong girl but Carrie Mulligan is such a great actress she's able to pull off these characters and her expressions and she can hit her mark with the emotions of the character and she plays a great headstrong Victorian beauty and the thing is she's caught between three different men and who she wanted to be with and you get to see the variation of how the style was for a period piece and how like the generation of you know she had the soldier you had the sheep farmer or you can go with the uh... Michael Sheen's character, the older bachelor, 
and it's like she needs to get far from the Manning crowd, you know, just so that she can find out what she really wants to do. It's a Fox Searchlight type of film, but very entertaining. I think it was very well done, and you'd think you would enjoy it. So, that was number eight, and we go on to number seven. Number seven to me is uh, Black Mass with Johnny Depp. Everybody talked about it, and I think it was more, it was greater than what they said. It just kind of came and went, and then it died off. The promotion leading up to it was good, then it just died off, and no one really talks about it, but the performance by Johnny Depp was one of his best in years. That's why I think people just really have it out for Johnny Depp for some reason, but this guy gave an outstanding performance in this role here, and I think that it's overlooked, and people need to go back and and, and look at Black Mass because this is a period piece of going back to like the 70s and in and, and the early 80s and back when the mafia and what was happening in the gangs over there in Boston between the Italians and then some of the Irish over there so Whitey Bulger story involved how the FBI was in cahoots with helping them out, you know, and so that they wanted to get a couple of bucks by you by using some guys of their own who was from the neighborhood, and how he took advantage of that and used that for his own pleasure, and how he was on the lam for like twenty some odd years and surviving. So Black Mass is definitely number seven. Number six on the list is The Gift. I think The Gift was uh, on the list because no one really gave it the attention. No media, no, no commercial really backed it. And then when the movie was out, it was really the word of mouth that had people going, Man, you got <clears throat> you gotta go and see this film. that it was pretty, it was, this movie was pretty good. The Gift is a film about old high school classmate comes back and finds successful new friends and he just pops in on them and he just keeps showing up at the doorsteps and you know it's just getting weirder and weirder and you don't know which direction this film is going to take and then the surprise of all surprises happens at the end and I knew where it was going. That's because I stay at the movies, but it's a very good film. <clears throat> but I think it was underrated and shouldn't have got more attention. And number five, we got 99 Homes. 99 Homes. And this is with Michael Shannon playing a it talked about the home real estate market. It's kind of like the big short, but not just talking about how they were wrongly evicting some people and trying to get them out the houses early so they could take the houses from them. And when they were foreclosing due to the market crash and the economic crisis, people were finding ways to cash in on demolishing homes because there were no construction jobs and things like that and the California area and Southern California took a big hit during that uh, time of 07 and 08 and waiting for things to get better and it just wasn't and then a lot of people lost their homes like millions of people lost their homes and number four we have the movie uh, true with Robert Redford and Kate Blanchett. Uh, Kate Blanchett to me played an outstanding role and it was better than her role I think that she played in Carol. It's, uh, she plays the reporter, I forget her name, but this is based on uh, 
the true story of Dan Rather and CBS and when he went out to President Bush's war record which got him removed and this is explained the details of what was happening behind the scenes which led to them doing that final broadcast and how everything just started falling the pieces started falling where they may and how the government used their power and things of that nature and it's a very good film I don't want to tell it too much about it because I don't want to ruin it but I want you to go out and see it definitely and um, it's one of my favorites so if anybody has one that's on the list that's definitely it and it brings us to number three on the list which is sleeping with other people <coughs> And a lot of people are going to be shocked. I got sleeping with other people so high. <clears throat> sleeping with other people is so high on my list because sleeping with other people seemed like an offbeat comedy, romantic comedy film that's going to fall flat. But it doesn't. It's a romantic comedy film that goes in so many different circles in so many different ways. You, but you're intrigued with the dialogue. And when I see the guy who's in the film that's playing in the role, and I said, okay, I don't know if he could pull this role off. I don't know how good he's going to be. But let's watch it anyway just to see if he could surprise me. So I'm watching the film and there it is, true to form, you have Jason Sudeikis gives the most, the best performance he's probably ever given in a film as far as being a quirky, funny guy who you, th who you believe has a lot of heart. And he's really caught in a situation where him and this girl were friends and they took each other's virginity in college. And they kind of branched off and haven't really talked to each other since. They both graduated, meet each other in the world, and they like become friends again. And they like best friends because they're talking about each other's sex lives, who they're dating, and blah, blah, blah. And they each could care less about the fact that they used to sleep together, like they took each other's virginity many years ago. And the, you know, you know how it all plays out. That eventually they're gonna get together at the end and be together but the way it goes you really don't know I love the film and that's why it's so high on my list and number two I have black hat with Michael Mann I don't know why why people dislike this movie it's done and this is a a cyber hacker into government secrets and Michael Mann does this great the shootout scene seems real you know I'm like what do they want from Michael Mann who did he get <laughs> why are they mad at him this film was good it's engaging the fact that you got Thor in the movie and you make the movie exciting with Thor and his character because he can only act one way I mean, sure, his character didn't hit the mark at certain times, but the movie and the story is so engaging. You want them to find out who this major hacker is so bad that you're like, man, you're thinking they're getting there and they're not, and you want to see how deep the rabbit hole really goes. And it gets to the situation where it's like, look, we gotta get, we're going to have to get in the mud to you know to get this thing fixed right so it was very interesting to me and that's why it's number two and the number one most underrated movie of all time is dope dope was man I went back to the show to watch dope I watched it at least three times it's smart it's intelligent and it's about a young man young african-american man growing up as basically a 90's geek in today's time he's hooked on the 1990's style and 
how that genre and era was. But he's a very smart student, but he knows little about the outside world of drugs, gangs, and things of this nature, and how all of these things work together in, the, in society and know anything about life. Most of his knowledge came from stories or books of what he read in the past, but couldn't resonate that to the living present. And he finds a way to do that within the film. And I said, wow, this is really interesting the way they did this film. And I'm, I'm very happy that it came off the way that it did. And it's a must see. And it is the number one most underrated film of 2015. The boy Carcino, I'm out. Done.